Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be building the ultimate tiny whoop. And so I'm going to go over every part that I'm using for this build. And so you can see if you want to build one just like this. So with the parts I chose, we'll be right around 18 grams. So let's get straight into what I'm using for the build and then we'll get into building. For the flight controller that we're going to be using for this build, it's the Hummingbird version 3 flight controller that has the ELRS um, receiver built right in and then also it has the VTX built right in. So all in one board, which makes it super easy for our build today. The flight controller does come in at $49.99, so about $50 on that. For the motors on this build, we're gonna be using the 0702 flow motors from Newbie Drone. These are actually the highest KV that Newbie Drone makes, and they're 29,000 KV motors. I like my whoops to be very fast, so that's the one we're gonna be going with on this build. These come in at $45.99, so pretty much $46 on the motors. Next up, we have the camera, and this is the Newbie Drone BI camera. It's only $12.99, and it does a job, and it does it very well. I've never had one fail on me, so that's the camera that we're going to be going with for this ultimate build. For the frame on this build, we're going to be going with the Newbie Drone cockroach frame. Now, this isn't the old cockroach frame. This is the new one that is very light. We are not using the carbon fiber frame thing because we want it to be super light. This frame comes in at $4.99, so pretty cheap on that, and it does a job, and it's super light. For the camera mount, we're gonna be using this Newbie Drone printed 25 degree angle camera mount. It is super light, a lot lighter than a Goober canopy from Newbie Drone. So because I want this build to be ultra light, this is what we're gonna be using, and it's gonna do the job. This little camera mount comes in at $3.99, so pretty cheap. Everything added up here comes in at $170.95, so almost $120. If you throw in a set of props, that's about $120 total. So we'll just go ahead with $120 total for this build. Let's get straight into building. Let's do it. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and put the grommets in the flight controller. Uh, this can take some time because it's very tedious and doesn't go in very easy. A lot of times I find the best way to put them in is grab a screwdriver and just push it in there and it will take some time but you'll get it eventually. And then we're just going to repeat the same process for all four. So get all four of those grommets in the flight controller. As soon as we get all the grommets put on the flight controller, all we're going to do now is just mount the flight controller onto the frame. We don't need to screw it in yet, just put it on the frame. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a motor on. We're not going to screw the motor in. All we're doing right now is trying to get the length of wire that we need. We're going to actually end up cutting off the connectors and soldering the motors on um, because we're going to try to save a little bit of weight. And so right now we're just going to hold the motor in place and get the exact length that we need on the wires and then we're going to just chop those off. And once you cut the wire on the first one, you can kind of see the length that you need on the rest. So just go ahead and cut the rest off. And then you can see that we're saving 0.31 grams by taking off those connectors. So that's a decent weight savings just by taking off the connectors on the motors. Now we're going to go ahead and take off the wire coating just big enough that we can tin them and get them ready to solder right onto the flight controller. Now all we're going to do is just tin all our motor wires and get them ready to solder onto our flight controller. Now 
Now we're going to go ahead and tin all the motor pads on our flight controller. For some reason I was having issues with tinning them. I don't know why the solder was not wanting to stick very well on the flight controller. But take your time. You don't want to try to go too fast and mess up a component on the flight controller. Uh, you'll get it eventually. Sometimes if your solder is not sticking properly on your flight controller or sticking properly, um, I noticed that if you use a little bit of flux on it, it does help for it to stick a little bit better. Now we're going to go ahead and solder all our motor wires up to our flight controller. It doesn't matter where you solder them because we're going to switch that later in Betaflight. If they are going backwards, it's a super easy switch in Betaflight. So don't worry about where you solder them. Just go ahead and solder them all up. If you really want to save additional weight, you could always take off the motor connectors on the flight controller. However, I don't recommend doing that because there's a high chance that you could mess something up on the flight controller and I don't want to be responsible for you doing that. So that's something that I'm going to do on mine. However, if you're worried about messing something up, if you're a little bit hesitant, definitely don't do it because I don't want you to mess something up on your flight controller. As soon as we get all the motors soldered up, all we're going to do now is go ahead and mount the flight controller and motors onto the frame. Um, so go ahead and fit the motors through the proper spot and then we're going to go ahead and push the flight controller down on the frame. You'll notice it's a little bit tight where you soldered the motors and you can actually bend because the frame is flexible. Just go ahead and bend the frame out of the way so you can fit the flight controller down on the frame. Now we're going to go ahead and take the motor screws that came with the frame. Not the ones that come with your motors because those are too long, but the ones that came with your frame because they're extra short. You're going to go ahead and use those um, to mount the motors. The easiest way I found to mount motors is do the top screw first and then don't do it tight and then go ahead and do the other two. We're not going to do all these tight until later on. So go ahead and just mount all your motors with the shorter screws. Don't do the longer ones. If you do want to save additional weight, you can always use plastic screws for your motors and then also mounting your flight controller, um, use plastic screws for that and that will save some additional weight. So if you're really wanting to get crazy and save a lot of weight, use plastic screws on everything and it will definitely be a lot lighter. Now we're just going to snug all the motors down, make sure they're nice and snug, not too snug, but just make sure they're nice and tight. Next after that we're going to go ahead and mount our camera into the TPU mount. You'll want to put the wire on the left side and if it's not going in too easy you can always use a heat gun or a hair dryer on the TPU mount, soften it up a little bit and then it should go in a little bit easier. As soon as you get that mounted in there to proper depth you should see the lens about flush with the front of the TPU mount. That way you're not seeing it in your FPV feed. Now we're going to go ahead and plug in the camera to the flight controller. So simply plug that into the front little connector there. Then we're going to go ahead and grab the ELRS receiver antenna and we're going to stick that through the TPU mount. There's a little slot that you can stick it through there and that makes it get out of the way of the motors and the props so you're not chopping that antenna off. Then we're just going to go ahead and screw the TPU mount down on the frame. You don't really need to stick in the screw in the back because it's not really doing any work and it's just adding weight. So I'm just mounting mine with the three screws, the side, two side ones and the front one. Okay, we got it all built finally. Super happy with how light it is coming in under 18 grams without props, adding props, 
puts it just over 18 grams, but super happy with how light it is. In the future, you'll be seeing another couple videos on this whoop, how to bind it to your transmitter, how to hook it up on Betaflight, and also some flying of this. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions about the build, let me know down in the comments. We'll see you next time.